Welcome to our lecture online and here's our second example of how we deal with light refraction and Snell's law and in this case we're also going to deal with total internal reflection. So what we have here is we have a triangular shaped piece of glass that has an index of refraction of 1.7. Above that we have a region of another material for which we do not know the index of refraction but we assume that it's smaller than 1.7 and then outside here we have air with an index of refraction equal to 1. And so the question is, if you send a beam of light in a horizontal path towards this uh, piece of glass, and notice the shape of the piece of glass has a 45, 45, 90 degree angle, it will refract across the boundary, it will hit the other boundary over there, and the question is, will it go across the band boundary into this other material, or will it be totally reflected like this, total internal reflection? And the question is, well, we want the total internal reflection, so what index of refraction will that take for that to then be ref reflected rather than refracted into the other material? So what will be the N4, what should the index of refraction be of that material above the glass? That's what we're looking for. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, let's understand a little bit more about total internal reflection and the critical angle. So let's say we have a boundary and uh, a beam is traveling towards the boundary like this and if the beam uh, comes from a region that has a higher index of refraction let's say n1 is equal to 1.5 and n2 is equal to 1 and notice I use my indices to indicate where we came from and where we're going to so we're going from region 1 to region 2 and we go from a higher index of refraction to a lower index of refraction what may happen if this angle relative to the normal of the surface which we call theta sub 1, which in this case is called the critical angle. If that angle is large enough, the light will not leave this region but simply reflect back inward so that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and will not refract across the boundary. What is required for that? Well, what we find with Snell's law is that N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2. So what we're trying to find is the, the angle at which the refracted angle will be exactly 90 degrees. So if this is the perpendicular vertical or normal to the surface, and this angle here is 90 degrees, if we call that the refracted angle, at that point, if the angle becomes any bigger than that, the light will now simply reflect back inside the material and not leave the material. So we set that angle equal to 90 degrees to find what we call the critical angle at which this begins to happen. So we're going to put in 90 degrees for sine of theta, so that means that n1 sine of theta1, and of course theta1 is now going to become what we call the critical angle, equals n2 times the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. So then we say, okay, that means that the sine of the critical angle is equal to n2 divided by n1, we bring n1 to the other side, and so the critical angle is equal to the arc sine of n2 divided by n1. Now notice, notice what has to happen here. If this becomes equal to 1, the arc sine of 1 is 90 degrees, then the critical angle becomes 90 degrees, which means that any angle less than 90 degrees, the light will simply escape which means for total internal ref reflection to occur, the index of refraction on the outside must be significantly smaller than the index of refraction on the inside of the medium. So when N2 becomes much smaller than N1, then you can see that this will be a number significantly smaller than 1, a smaller fraction, and the arc sine of a smaller fraction simply means a smaller angle. So the larger the difference between those two, the smaller the critical angle can be and the light will still be reflected internally, will not leave the medium. So let's keep that in mind. So that means if we're looking for N4, we want N4 to be significantly smaller than N2, or actually, I call this N1, N2, and then I'm from, I'm go from N3 to N4. So uh, N2 and N3 is actually the same thing, is the index of fraction of the glass in here. So what we want then is we want N4 to be significantly smaller than N3, otherwise the light will easily leave. So what is the, the smallest value that N4 can be, um, or in this case the largest value it can be, because the larger it becomes the harder it is for light to actually internally reflect. So what is the largest value that N4 can be where this is still internally reflected under these conditions? All right, let's now go solve the problem. The first thing we want to do is find out what happens across the first boundary. 
And so if this is a 45 degree angle, that means that this must be a 45 degree angle as well, because this is normal to the surface, which means the angle of incidence is equal to 45 degrees, so that's theta sub 1. So now the question is, what is theta sub 2 equal to? All right, we use Snell's law to figure that out. We go n1 sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2 which means if we solve this for sine of theta 2, sine of theta 2 is equal to the left side, which is n1, sine of theta 1 divided by the coefficient of sine of theta 2, which is n2. And so when we plug in all the numbers, we can then say that theta sub 2 is equal to the arc sine of n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2, and n1 is equal to 1, sine of 45 degrees, and the whole thing divided by n2, which is 1.7. So that will give us the angle of refraction across that first boundary. So let's see what that's equal to. So we have 45, take the sine of that, divide by 1.7, and take the arc sine. And that gives us 24.6 degrees. So theta sub 2 equals 24.6 degrees, which is the refracted angle across the first boundary. That's this angle right here, 24.6 degrees. Now, what, what will this angle then be over here? Well, in order to do that, let's go through all the angles here. If this one is 24.6 degrees, we know that this angle here must be 45 degrees, and that means that this angle here must be 135 degrees. How do I know that this angle is 45 degrees? Well, first of all, I know that this angle here is 45 degrees, and the normal line through here has to be 90 degrees. So that's 45, that's 90, and this must be 45 degrees because the angles always add up to 180 degrees for the three angles of a triangle. So if this is 45, then this must be 135. If this is 135 and this is 24.6, what is this angle equal to? Well, that angle will be 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, minus 24.6 degrees, and that's uh, 180 minus 135 is 45. 45 minus 24, hmm, it's 20.4 degrees. Don't need a calculator for that. 20.4 plus 24.6 is 45 degrees. All right. So that this angle means it's 20.4 degrees, which means that this angle relative to the normal must be 90 minus that, which is 69.6 degrees. Because 90 minus 20.4 is 69.6 degrees, which is the critical angle that we're looking for, assuming that there will be total internal reflection. All right, so then going back to our critical angle right here, if we know our critical angle, we're now trying to find out what N2 is equal to, which means Using this very same equation, but in different format, we can say that N2 is equal to N1 times the sine of the critical angle. So we use the very same equation, just looking for N2 because that's what we're after. Well, in this case, we're not looking for N2, we're looking for N4. So let's use the indices that we want here. So N4 equals N3 times the sine of theta critical. So what I do here is I call this N3. And I'll call this N4, and I'm going across the boundary like that. Okay, so N4 equals N3, which is 1.7, times the sine of the critical angle, or the sine of what we found here is 69.6 degrees. All right, so what is that equal to? So take 69.6 degrees, so minus plus 90 equals, uh, not quite, so 60 9.6 degrees, take the sine of that and multiply it times 1.7 and I get 1.59. So N4 equals 1.59. Now, is that a maximum value or is that a minimum value? Well, remember again, in order for, for things to be reflected internally, you want the difference to be as large as possible. You want this to be as, <clears throat> well, if you want the difference to be as large as possible, you want this to be as small as possible. So that means that this is a maximum value. This value or less than that value will allow a total internal reflection. If this becomes too large and the difference between the two indices of refraction become too small, it will cross the boundary and not be reflected. So this must be a maximum value. All right, and that is how we do that type of problem.